Now I know some of y'all are gonna freak out and go, you've got an MSD system? I hope you have another 10 or 12 of them in your boat so you can get far enough out or just hit be rescued by the Coast Guard. And I get what you're saying, but we're lucky enough we've had pretty good luck with them. And knock wood or knock teak or knock fake wood, whatever you want to say, knock fiberglass. Knock on freedom, baby. We've had good luck, and I think it may have been because of almost dumb luck in the same sense. When we bought our first MSD box, we bought it off of eBay. And it worked fine, and like some said, it died. So I contacted MSD, and I said, hey, what's up with this? And they said, send it back in. It was like 84 bucks, total rebuild, and they'll send it back to me. And that's like the total cost. Now this was a couple years ago. Little did I realize that the boxes that I was in the market for at the time, because I wanted them all to match, I actually have another one in another boat, the 19 of course, and I bought the NASCAR version where they actually have clear backs, I can't show you because they're mounted right now, but they have the clear backs and they're epoxy filled. So it was kind of like their first version, whether they planned on it or not their first version of like their off-road version or their marine version so we've had really good luck with them one of the things we found out about the MSD systems is, is they screw with um, timing lights that are adjustable for some reason uh, there's been a lot of chatter about it and that's another reason why we're just gonna go old-school we actually have a timing light where it adjusts you know, in the back. And we've always thought, it's not digital, it's kind of the knob time kind, and we've always thought that, you know, just a little bit this way, a little bit that way could mean a degree. So, it looks like 36, but it could be 35. It could be 37, <laughs> you know, so it's not that close. And with our balancers, it also makes it even more difficult to even see them, to be honest. So, we went out, and bought ourselves some balancer tape. Yay! The good thing about it is now we'll actually be able to see and we're gonna we've learned a lot about timing curve and uh, distributors and everything else and what these guys are supposed to do, these pro comp distributors. Again, people say they're junk. I've had really good luck with these guys and knock on wood once again in three boats and they've all worked very well and uh, like the $99 specials. We've never been confident in the exact timing we've got, so we're going to go with these. That's another reason why we're just going to go old school. We're going to use our old school timing light. We're going to use some tape. And uh, we're going to see exactly where we are when we're all in. That way uh, we really do know what's going on and where we're at. Maybe they are already set. I mean, I pretty much set them by ear because I had to, you know. And uh, uh, and I used the timing light to make sure they were that way around where they were supposed to be and they don't ping and they don't knock so they're probably real close but you know a degree of timing can mean a whole lot a whole lot so and we're gonna set our timing at 2500 rpms you know what it's going to be all in basically and then from there we're going to um, just adjust the motor wherever it happens to be. I got a good feeling it's probably going to be around 18 degrees, somewhere around there, maybe 20, you know, at idle. And uh, we'll have to figure out how to calm it down at that sense because, you know, <laughs> but now I have to go crawl back in the hole again. And hopefully it'll be pretty painless because all I got to do is install this tape. I do have to wipe it off and I do have to do what I have to do, but. Yahoo! Here we go. So, as we said in the last video that we did this, this is not the easiest task in the world. Uh, so, oh damn, that's cold. Whew. All right. Okay. Here we are. Once again. This time I want to be up here a little bit. Okay. 
That looks a little fruitless. I thought I could actually see the timing mark somewhere, but I can't. So I'm going to have to turn the motor over first, which means, I don't know, turning the motor over. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. Anything down here? Oh. And I don't see any missing material. Oh, look. Here's some of my hair from the last time. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a long hair. Woo Rose got on me. Okay, so that was fruitless. We're gonna have to, uh, like I said, we're gonna have to spend the motor before we do anything. Uh, here's another option, of course. We could always put a wood pack down over top of this, but we'd never be able to get to our fuel pumps underneath of it, so that's why we had to fight it out that way. But here we are, and like I said, I've had my issues with uh, timing marks and what have you, so I've actually gone ahead and marked and marked. But as you can see, when you start getting up in the 35 range, that just goes away with the wind. So now I'm going to have to get this cleaned up and actually figure out how I want to get the tape around it. I really just want the first section, but I want it to stay on too. Somebody said just hit it with clear coat, but we'll see. I can't see that even with my trifocals I can't see anything I have been told though that you got to be careful about it coming off so that's why I uh, resolved the whole thing and then on top of that I got it to come all the way around and it matched perfectly which that means it's pretty square on the actual balancer also and most of all once you hit it with the clear it'll stay on forever and it won't get dirty so you can't see it anymore either so all right, I think this one's done. Now I have to go pull the center piece out of the front half of the boat so I can get into the bow. Maybe while I'm in there, I'll show you around a little bit too. See you shortly. Hey, and while we're down here, we're gonna fish around and make sure we got, oh damn, there it is. If y'all been around a couple videos, you know we lost this. Almost brought me to a standstill for about a minute. I was like, oh, where the hell? Here it is. Yay. I know it's stupid, but it's great <laughs> for me. <laughs> uh, race boat life. In past videos, we've shown that this uh, bar here is just held in with a couple wing nuts. And it's meant to be able to be removed pretty easily. Is it something that I would have go out in five foot rolling seas and try to do 120 miles offshore? Probably not, but even the million dollar race teams today don't have mid race motor replacements yet. So, but if you're at a marina tied up to a dock, it just takes a couple wing nuts to get them out. And voila. I really don't get to see this motor this way much. Thank God. We don't want to see it with the bar moved much because that usually means that the motor hoist is next. Alright, now we got enough room we can actually get down there. Let's get our tape on before it gets dark. Let me take you to a place that no camera has ever filmed before. Where 
some men have gone in and not all have come back out. A place known as the Supernova Bow. Hey, hey we're in here. There's a, this one's a lot, of, a lot more space in here, man, I'm telling you. And I hope the camera will actually help me out a little bit with the, with the lighting. As you can see, we've come from the bulkhead down. This is the motor front, of course, but you can't access any of this unless you can reach around here or you take the bar out and replace whatever you need to do and then come put the bar back in. But here we have our hose that comes from the transom and actually comes up to this valve here, which is hooked to a cable a regular throttle cable and opens and shuts it and comes up to this guy up here this guy we figure it's about 50 to 75 gallons and it is straight up water that comes in this black hose here it's got a sheath on the orange hose that used the red hose you just saw and it fills it up there and as you can see this line here that comes off and goes over here, that's that actually vent that sticks out the bow. And when it's full, it'll actually blow water out of the bow. And what's really crazy about it is this, there's no pumps, nothing. This all works off of what comes off the transom pickup. And then when you're done with it, come over here and this hose actually comes out of the bottom of this big barrel right there and that's the valve that actually holds it in and when you open that up it dumps it right down that little hole right there out the front of the boat so I don't know seven pounds times 50 seven pounds times you know 75 you know for water I and mean, it's uh, anywhere from couple hundred to 350 pounds actually and this is really in the boat in the bow I mean this is right up on the nose so also we have you know these vents that actually they're the ones that kind of stick out right there they come down and they dump right here bring some fresh air up in the bow even though everything's so wide open it's just you know and just in case they ever tunnel some water, you know, they're going to dump in the bilge and not necessarily in the in the actual on the motor itself. And so that's why they're over here like they are one on each side. And finally we have these little black brackets here which are just typical L angle chopped off and mounted to the hull. We are under the assumption, now this hasn't been confirmed that because there's one on each side. That this was actually for an auxiliary fuel tank mount that may have held another <laughs> 50 to a 75 gallons bringing their total up to like 300 gallons of fuel I mean that's just insane but what we're here to do is this guy right there see that white mark it's getting a tape on it from that point on and we'll be able to see it and I know it kind of looks obvious now, but I'm telling you, when we're using a timing light on this thing and you got to bend around from the outside in and see where your mark is, and then you want to, you know, get the thing up to 2,500, 3,000 RPMs to check your top end, and things are spinning, and your natural instinct is to pull away from stuff that's spinning like this at massive amounts of RPMs, and yet, you have to actually stick your head in closer to actually see it. So, with this new timing tape, hopefully that'll uh, eliminate that factor. Let's do a race boatism. Oh, that's kind of a sports center. All right, whatever. Race boatism. 
even though the 24 is quite unique it has a lot of features that are really easy to figure out like this top set of gauges is for the front motor the bottom set of course is for the rear motor this top fuel pump is for the front motor this one is for the rear motor so you kind of get it. I mean, even the cabin lights, these are for the front cabin lights, which we do have lights up underneath the deck in case we get caught out at night and need to see something. Um, even all the way up underneath the front deck. And, you know, the rear cabin lights. I mean, it's all relative. But this thing's a real beast when you want to maneuver around in the marina. And I'm sure a lot of people would look at this and go, oh, twin th throttles. <laughs> I'd spin that thing right around like a top. Well... This is the unique part. One is for the front motor. This one. This is for the rear motor. And I've even went ahead and labeled them just to make sure that they don't uh, get mixed up. And if you were ever to flip A and B, like so, you would probably come to an immediate stop and cost yourself thousands of dollars because you have one motor opposite of the other one, you would actually twist your drive shafts or destroy the V-drive, which I prefer actually the twisting of the drive shafts. It's much cheaper. So whenever we are around in a marina and have other tight quarters to maneuver around, we only use the front motor because it's the one, it's actually one to one. And that's actually the highest gear ratio that we have in this boat. So basically, this boat is a point, set, and forget. Something to finish out our day and do a little discovery. I'm sure this looks worse on camera than it does in person, but that's transmission fluid. It's not a good thing. We gotta find out where it's leaking from. I hope it's the rear shaft. The output shaft. Just the input shaft. Oh man. I'll get on the other side here. Alright, next thing I want to do is the paper towel test here. Now I looked at a couple pictures. Just what I thought. It's a little scummy, but there's no fluid. Now, as I go to the back here, that's fluid. And I hate to say this, but to be honest, it's the best news I could actually have if it's going to leak. I really prefer the output shaft over the input shaft. Because uh, input shaft means pulling the transmission. I know it's hard to tell, but that's actually from underneath the flange. And it has nothing to do with the bottom. So if it was actually coming out of the front seal and running down the actual casing itself, it wouldn't run up to the flange. I mean, I've seen some water do against the gravity things before, and I've seen fluids do that. But not an inch and a half, two inches up, just to make it look good. So I think we found our culprit. Sadly, it has to be a culprit. But again, it could have been worse. Now I have to sop up some of this stuff. So I think we discovered where our leak is, but just to be on the safe side, we've uh, decided to put down this orangey looking absorbent paper towel looking thing and uh, we'll be able to see. We got it setting up on a block so it doesn't sit in bilge water and it's kind of cradled underneath of it and we'll see at least where the drops are coming from. But as I said, I think we've pretty much determined exactly where the drops are coming from 
you know, at least it won't let the transmission fluid fly in the bilge and cause a big mess anyway. That's a lot of editing off of this one. Man, another dead battery. She's a sick bitch, ain't she, though? Be sure to like and subscribe. We really need the subscribers. We really need the likes. We need you to validate our existence. Without you, we are nothing. Probably with you, we're nothing too, but that's another point at another time. Hey, we see you. As we've said in the past, this bar has been... One more time. As we've said in the past, this bar is made to be removed by just a few wing nuts. I mean, would it be something I want to do out at sea in a five foot rolling 30 mile an hour? La 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 la. This bar, like we've showed in other videos, is just held in with a couple wing nuts. And there's a reason for that. Now we got a big truck. Yep. In past videos, we've shown that this bar here is actually meant to be removed. Now he does a burnout, son of a bitch. We've said in the past that this bar here is uh, easily removed. No, let's do that again. And he goes again. We've shown in the past how this. This is why everything takes so long to do, because they do it like 17 times. All right.